Hi, I'm Andrew with Flare, back again to show you how to brew with a Flare Neo. This is a model we recommend for anyone that currently does not have a budget for a grinder suitable for espresso method, or someone looking to brew with pre-ground coffee that is too coarse to resist the flow and therefore build pressure in the brew head. Without pressure, it can only be called a strong brew at best. The Neo ships with a flow control port filter that ensures you have the necessary time and pressure to achieve a good extraction, regardless of what you place in the basket. The serviceable and replaceable tip contains a constriction point, a single small hole that backs up the flow from hundreds of holes above in the filter basket. It releases it in a very slow and measured way. This creates back pressure in the system and thus allows you to brew at pressures considered necessary for espresso. The Neo requires you to preheat the brewing cylinder for optimum results. While there is an optional preheat cap you can purchase, we recommend you use this only when convenience is your number one priority. In fact, it's arguably less convenient to preheat this way than what we'll be demonstrating today. Our favorite method is to use steam from the kettle that we're boiling our water in to brew. This small hack essentially requires you to look around your home or online for something that can suspend the cylinder above the boiling water. Canning funnels, both metal and silicone, or even a small sifter or colander will suffice. Set your kettle to boil and get on to other things while you get your brew cylinder up to temperature. When you're first starting out with your Neo, we suggest a dose of around 15 grams in targeting a grind that feels soft between your fingers but still gritty. Thanks to the flow control mechanism embedded in the portafilter, you'll be able to achieve a good result with a wider range of grind sizes than you would with a non-flow control basket. That said, we highly recommend your next purchase is a grinder that can not only grind fine enough to allow the coffee cake to be that mechanism that resists flow and builds pressure, but also one with enough grind adjustment settings that you fine tune your extraction to taste. 60 grind settings are the minimum we believe you'll need for the espresso method. Since we're brewing on an espresso maker that was built to travel, we recommend you pair it with a grinder that shares the same DNA. But if that's not reason enough, consider that you get more bang for your buck with manual grinders. This is our Royal Grinder, and as you would expect, it excels at espresso, but also serves up a good filter brew. If you're not already brewing with ratios and recipes, we highly recommend you do so. To that end, we recommend you brew with a scale so you can measure your input and your output to ensure repeatable results. Today, we'll be brewing with 15 grams of dry coffee and pooling to a yield of about 37 grams in around 25 to 30 seconds. This would be a 1 to 2.5 brew ratio. The darker your coffee, the more you're probably going to like it at a 1 to 2 or even less. Conversely, the lighter your coffee, the better the chances you're going to enjoy ratios approaching 1 to 3. These are only suggestions and you should experiment to find what works best for your coffee and your palate. All right, let's grind. All right, so once you have your coffee ground, go ahead and take your included funnel, place it over the portafilter like that, put a dust cup there. This will help to make sure that the coffee goes where it needs to, into the basket. Make sure you get it all out just to check. Now, depending on how much coffee you used, you might notice that the mound of coffee sits above the rim of the basket. So you might find yourself needing to kind of shake it around a little bit to get it to settle. You can also give it a couple taps like this. You also can just use your tamper to press right in through the top without having to remove the funnel. So we'll go ahead and do that right now because it does look like I have a little bit of a mound. Now that we have that already tamped and ready to go, slide that on top into place. And we're gonna go take our preheated cylinder, slide that there. We're gonna fill it up right to the etched line on the inside. We wanna make sure that we don't leave any air inside. Try to get it as close as you can. Take our piston. It helps a little bit to tilt it forward just as you line that up and place it in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly pull down on the lever. We're going to ramp up to pressure. When we start to see that stream of coffee, we're just gonna sit there and hold that. Keep that going for a good 25, 30 seconds. And we're approaching our 36, 37 grams. We're going to go ahead and just make sure that we're not pushing too hard. 
at the end. With the pressurized brew head, you're going to have a little bit of pushback as you let up. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not adding too much to that. All right, so we have our shot. We're going to go ahead and clean up. Uh, I did pull all the way out. I got my 37 grams actually by pushing all the way through. So we won't have to do any purging, but if you did, you could always just swap out a cup and then continue to pull that lever down until you completely remove all the water in here because we're going to have to clean this. We don't want to have that water spill out over our hands. So it's a good idea to make sure that before you take these things apart, you ensure that there's nothing left in there. So we're going to grab our knock box, which is nice to have around so you don't have to bang out the coffee into a trash can or into the sink. And I'm going to flip it upside down this way. When I start to pull these two things apart and there's a little bit of suction going on, the coffee itself might be coming out of the portafilter, any kind of water on top as well. This ensures that anything that does come out falls in. So we'll go ahead and pull this up and out like this. So the coffee is there and my screen's here, which is nice and easy. Flip that out and over. I'm going to have to give this a few good knocks to try to get that out. And it did come out. Now, if I'm going to brew with another person uh, in mind, as well as myself, I'm probably just going to wipe this out with a paper towel and go ahead and prep this basket again. Then I'll come over here with my brew head, use my dose cup, flip it upside down, and just press this back up and out like that so it's ready to go. Set this over here and let that preheat while I go ahead and continue prepping for the next shot. Like with all flares, maintenance is next to none. Thanks to the patented removable brew head that provides you unfettered access to the complete brew path. Just a quick rinse under the sink after every use, leave it out to dry, and you can skip all the pesky back flushes, descales, and special cleaning powders that other machines require. Since water does not flow freely out of the bottom, it's a good idea after every use to remove the tip and rinse out the compartment to keep coffee residue from building up there. If you ever notice the restrictor clogging, you can soak just that part in vinegar for about 20 minutes, then give it a good rinse before use. We also sell a three pack of tips that could be worth having on hand should a permanent blockage ever occur. Depending on the frequency of use, once every month or so, you should remove the O-rings and wipe out any residue you find in the grooves. When doing so, take care not to use sharp or pointed implements that might damage the O-rings. And there you go. That's brewing with the Flare Neo. If you want to see what it's like to brew with one of our other models, select the corresponding thumbnail. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Happy brewing.